Coming up in today's video, we continue our 172 AB figures painting tutorials. Today's focus is the feared British Airborne, otherwise known as the Red Devils. This tutorial will go into detail about the process I take to paint off fencing, denison smock, webbing, etc. Let me know at the end of the video how you found this tutorial and what AB figures you'd like to see next. Okay guys, so we're going to be getting straight into painting this uh, paratrooper. Uh, so as I do with all my other videos, I prime them in like a really dark brown um, color. So I'm not going to tell you what I use, just whatever you fancy. You can watch my old videos as well and you'll be able to see what I use there. Then to paint the jacket or the smock, we're going to be using Vallejo Middlestone. Um, it's a very yellowy sort of on the border of khaki look and that's what we want it's quite bright um so you might be thinking um you know it's way too bright for what we need that's okay we're going to darken it later on so let's go ahead and use this bright color i'll pop a picture in now of of what uh jacket i'll be using because there was a couple of variants that the british airborne used uh, this is mark ii so he's going to be based for arnhem and d-day um the mark one was very bright um, so you know you wouldn't have to darken this if you wanted to use this as a mark one then i'm going to be dry brushing the jacket so i'm dry brushing it because i'm being a bit lazy here ordinarily i'd go around with a paintbrush and just try and capture little areas but i really want all of the creases to pop so i'm using a 50 50 mix of middle stone and iraqi sand um, it's hard to see in the in the camera but it's going to be highlighting all of those creases as i just said um, and that's ideal uh, for this because you're going to be putting all kinds of colors over it you're probably not really going to see it but um, it helps for the areas that are going to be left with this um, middle stone now we want to move to the green um, spots or stripes and i'm using reflective green for that and i'm just flicking so you can see with my brush i'm just flicking it letting the paintbrush um, sort of dry a little bit i want to see those paintbrush lines i don't want it just to be one big blob of green um, if you look at the uniform that the brits used uh, there's a lot of straight lines um, and like brush looking marks so that's what you want to try and capture and then it's the same with the brown so i'm using mahogany brown here um, and i'm going to be doing exactly the same technique as what we just spoke about uh, just to make sure that it gives it a bit of a more authentic look opposed to just having blobs of green and brown on there which you know is very easy to do um, but this takes no effort at all and can really help the figure look better try not to smother like a pocket or any area that's got a little bit more detail um, with these colors and also remember that the sleeves uh, were different to the rest of the body etc so don't just paint the same pattern over the sleeve um, from the arm into the body try and mix it up now i'm using a dark wash um, it's a games workshop wash and i'm mixing it with a bit of their thinner as well just to make sure um, that it's not too dark so this will act like a um, brown filter as well as a wash so i'm trying to go between the two a bit of a filter but a little bit darker um, so it can also get in some of those creases and just give us a little bit of of that uh, highlight or um, just to get into the creases to make those those uh, creases pop. Now I'm going back over with that initial brown color that I spoke about. So whatever you chose here, and I'm just going over the areas that I dry brushed that don't need to be dry brushed. So the webbing, the gun, all of that stuff. You're probably thinking it's a little bit overkill uh, and you wouldn't be wrong but it is also good practice to do this so it's up to you if you want to skip a step you can we're going to be painting over it anyway but it's good practice now we're moving on to his trousers so we're going to be using english uniform for them and it's the same technique as what we painted um, just previously so we're just going to be pretty much smothering it on i'm leaving a little bit of that dark brown just between the smock and his trousers uh, the reason I'm doing that is just so we can differentiate between the two because they're a similar sort of color. We will be darkening this color using the exact same process as before later on. Once we're happy with that, um, we can go ahead and also paint his canteen or his water bottle in the same color. 
um, and just make sure that you're capturing the four little squares that are in there uh, because the webbing goes around that water bottle. Now we can go ahead and paint the webbing. So I'm using Russian uniform World War II for this. It's a greeny gray color, but more on the greeny side. So it's a fantastic color for webbing, especially for initial base coat. We're gonna go ahead and amend it slightly later on. Um, but for an initial color, this Russian uniform is fantastic. And again, don't be afraid just to smother it on just try and leave some of that dark brown slash black uh, undercoat just on the sides just so we can see okay that's webbing all right and then we're going to be using umbar wash from Vallejo and we're going to be painting over his webbing in this and we just try and dab on um, be quite generous dab it on and let it get into the creases you can use a variety of browns for this if you wanted to but I find umbar wash is quite a good brown uh, for this and just take your time um, and feel free to sort of wore it down as well. That will probably help. Also do the trousers and that water bottle that we uh, just looked at. Then you can move on back to painting Russian uniform World War II and just going over um, the webbing and his gaiters. Make sure you're capturing all of the raised areas here, this is where we're going to start highlighting. So we're using the Russian Uniform World War II with the wash as our base color. Now we're going to be using the Russian Uniform World War II as our first layer. Um, and you can see it's just a little bit brighter, but it's a subtle brightness, this, which is fantastic for this scale. And I'm making sure here that I'm getting all the little bits of detail. So any straps that are coming off the webbing, buckles, anything like that, I'm getting in between the canteen as well. Now I'm going with a 50-50 mix of Russian Uniform World War II and Iraqi Sand. So it's a lighter green now, so it's more of a green gray. Um, but again, just building up those layers. So this is going to be my main highlight. So I'm not going to be smothering this on i'm just going to be picking out small little details adding little creases to the bag putting in lines on the webbing anywhere that i can sort of show a little bit more detail um, i'm going to be doing i'm not going to be doing it underneath the bag anywhere that's going to be really dark i'm going to leave that out i'm also getting in again with the canteen don't forget the gaiters um, and just take your time here this is the fun part Okay, so the next step is to go back over his trousers. So we're going to be doing that with the original color that we used, which was English uniform. We're going to go over that, um, but we're going to be leaving some of that darker color in the in the creases. It's exactly the same process throughout this entire painting tutorial. So um, I'm probably going to be repeating myself a lot, and I do apologize for that. But um, this is the process I take. You can tweak it to how you feel uh, necessary. Uh, this is just how I do things and as I say in all my videos, I'm definitely no expert Now we want to paint his shoes. So they're sort of like a black leather look so you can be a bit creative here I'm going very boring I'm gonna paint them black and I'll dry brush them with whatever ground color that I decide to do For Arnhem, it's gonna be an earthy color if you're gonna be painting a miniature um, Or an airborne figure that has a beret make sure you paint the black band at the bottom of the beret that goes around his head because it was black. Now for any of the metallic objects, so uh, his rifle or Sten gun in this case, uh, bayonet, whatever, we want to paint that in German grey. The reason we want to paint that in German grey is because we're going to give it a black wash later on which will help some of those details on that Sten gun pop out. Um, so German grey makes for a fantastic sort of metallic colour without being super shiny like we would know. Uh, some metallic colors to be and here is uh, the bayonet that I was talking about Now I've changed up my uh, Wood painting technique. I've decided to go with buff. So it's a it's a lighter brown color and looking at some of the um, Resources that I've got for British Airborne the Sten gun and, and the Lee Enfield was a bit of a lighter brown Obviously, it's going to vary depending on factories, etc. But lighter brown uh, Will always help so I'm going to put an initial coat down of this buff. Now I want to paint the helmet and anything else that is the sort of allied green so I'm going to be using US dark green for that so 
When I say allied green, I'm talking about his helmet. If he's got a sleeping bag, for example, which I believe this this model had a little bag coming out there. If it's actual bag, but the bag was folded up within the bag. Um, and if they've got their scarf, so the, the British paratroopers had these um, scarves. So I'm going to be painting them in green. The scarves are green and brown, but, you know, I'm just going to go with just green for this, just so it makes them stand out a bit more. And then that's the bag I was referring to. Now we've painted the stain gun in that German grey. I now want to go over it in Null Oil, which is a Citadel black wash. Really guys, you can use any black wash for this. Just put it on there and capture all those details. So for his entrenching tool and the top of his um, canister, the, the water bottle, I'm using US Field Drabs. So this is going to be just a base coat. Um, it's a woody color, a little bit lighter. So I like to put this down as my base coat and then I'll give it a wash later on and then I'll highlight it after that. So just make sure you're getting the water bottle. So the very top of that water bottle, it was like a corky color. Um, I don't want it to drown out. So I'm using that US field drop. Now I'm going back over the buff uh, with unbar wash. I'm also going to be going over the entrenching tool, uh, that water bottle, the top of the water bottle, the um, helmet, and anything else that we've just painted in the green or in the wood color. Don't obviously go over the metallic object because we've just gone over that in the black wash. So that wouldn't make much sense. Uh, you would think it wouldn't make much sense, but I've done it before in the past, just had a bit of a brain fart. So just, just be careful. So I talked about highlighting the wooden entrenching tool and the water bottle, etc., or the top of the water bottle, I should say. We're using old wood for that. So excuse my fingers being in the way, but just a subtle highlight, just lines across where the sunlight would get to. For the wood, we're going back over what we've just washed. So we've put the buff down, we've put on bar wash over it, we've let it dry, and now we're going back over it with buff. But I'm not painting the entire thing, I'm just capturing uh, the details. So this stain gun had a stain gun foregrip, um, so I'm painting in the little bits where the fingers would go. Same with the actual um, where the near the trigger and also his stock. So now we want to paint it in like I just want to use a highlight for a silver. So I'm using this base Citadel color, um, and I'm just capturing little details. I'm not coating the whole thing in silver because it will just look too silly too um, cartoony so just capture the little details so parts of the magazine a little bit of the iron sight uh, whatever you can see um, that would be getting direct sunlight obviously you're not going to be painting underneath it now I'm just going to give the helmet a very quick dry brush of green grey um, be very generous as well the reason I'm doing this is because he's got a netting over his helmet so this is going to capture that netting and it's going to create um, the inner part of the netting to look dark and the outer part to look like netting. So that's why I'm doing that here. Now with the British Airborne, they wore um, maroon berets, not red, not bright red berets, but maroon. So the best color I could find for that is AK Interactive Wine Red. Um, very good color for this. Please, if you're going to be painting British Airborne, do not paint their berets red, all right? It's a very common mistake to see made, and some people have painted some fantastic Airborne figures, British Airborne figures, but they've painted their red berets, and it just looks um, historically inaccurate. All right, so going back over the US dark green, so I was talking about the bag that was coming out of the bag, I'm um, painting that in US dark green. Um, I'm also going to be painting little parts of the scrim um, on his helmet in dark green don't paint that entire lot because they had green and brown so I'm just picking select few bits here and I'm just gonna be painting just the occasional bit in green also I'm going back over the scarf so we've painted it in US dark green we've put the unbar wash on it now I'm going back over with that base color but we're, we're layering here so with the beret I'm going over it in that black wash the reason I'm doing that is because I want to use that wine red again to create sort of definition around the beret. So maybe a bit where his head would be sticking out, a few little creases, etc. So as I've just mentioned, we're going back over that beret now in wine red, um, but I'm not painting the entire thing on because it would defeat the purpose of putting the black wash on. I'm leaving a few lines here, a few little dents here and there, whatever your creative eye can, can sort of capture 
um, that would make it look a bit out of shape and a few creases here and there. That's part of the game and that's what makes it really pop. So going over the scrim, so we want to do, we've done the green, now we want to do the brown. I'm going to be putting down a base color of flat earth. I'm using flat earth because the next color I'm going to be using um, is obviously a bit lighter and flat earth really um, is a good base color for this. Okay, so going over the green scrim, so not the brown, but the green, we're using German camo bright green. So it's a very vibrant color, so don't be going crazy with it. Just capture details, break it up, um, those little bits of scrim, break them up so there's a dark and light, um, because it will really make that scrim pop. Same with the bag, and same with um, the scarf that's going to be on the chap shown in the picture now. I'm just adding little lines here and there just to show that it's a bit creased, it's worn around his neck, um, just giving it that used look. So now we are highlighting the brown part of the scrim. So we're using old wood. It's a very light wooden colour, but it will really make it pop. And I can guarantee you that once you finish using this technique, you will, fan you will love it. It's fantastic. Hopefully you can see in the video now it's really coming out so you can make out the scrim perfectly and you can see the difference between the green and the brown. Sometimes people paint it and the two colours look very similar or they're very dark and you can't even make them out. Alright so to paint the flesh we're going to be using dark shadow flesh. Um, if you want a more in-depth look at how I paint flesh then um, just watch my tutorial from the other week where I'm painting oak leaf that will give you a better understanding because next I move on to base flesh and I'm just capturing the details here leaving a bit of that dark red between the nose and where the eye sockets would be trying to make the face um, a little bit more detailed with the brighter paint as I build up now I'm moving on to light flesh same again I'm painting probably 50% of the uh, the base flesh color that I've just put down and then I will um, just slowly start building up. If I feel like anywhere else needs any, I'll just slowly start touching at it. Don't rush this process. And then finally, I'm going to use highlight flesh. Unfortunately, my camera angles in this shot was terrible, so you can't see what I'm doing. But as I said, my previous video will show this in a lot more detail. Um, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. And I'll put a little thing on the top there so you can click it. All right, so almost at the end, guys, but we're going to be painting the part of the helmet, the strap. So we're using German camo medium brown. So the straps for this helmet, they come down near the ears and they work the way all the way around to the back of the head. So make sure that you're you're capturing all of that. And um, you can leave a bit of that really dark brown around the sides just to give it a bit more um, detail. It's up to you what you wanna do here. Um, obviously it's not really that important, but you've gone to all the trouble of painting the miniature the way it is. You don't wanna leave it at the end with something that's average so to highlight that strap i'm using german camo pale brown and i'm just going to leave grooves where it would go underneath the chin i'm trying to capture where it separates if there's any sort of like linkages i'm going to be painting them as well and then once we've got all of this it's down to the basing part so i'm just going to be using vallejo earth texture to start off with because i'm going to be basing these for arnhem just as if they've just got off the the glider or as if they've um, just parachuted down. So give the texture about 12 to 24 hours to cure. Once you've done that, dry brush it with medium gray. You can go as heavy or as light as you want to. It's really up to you. Then um, the final dry brushing that I do here is stonewall gray, and that's just to get the rocks that I've put down. You can put down rocks if you want. You don't have to, but it's European. So there's a few little rocks around. And then um, whatever color you want your base. So I generally like to go for black here. Uh, it's really up to you again. Uh, apologies for the camera, but um, I'm flocking these guys now. I'm using one millimeter Peco grass, summer grass, and I'm just going crazy with it, making sure that I'm using the correct flocking technique using that tool. Now I'm just putting down just random bits of flowers, bush, whatever you want to do. I've got some leaves here, but just again, do it to your own taste. There's no need to follow exactly what I'm doing. 
And here they are in picture form. So there's just the four guys going to take on the whole of the German army in Arnhem. But um, yeah, there's four of them there. And I think personally, they've come out really nicely. Um, so let me know in the comments what you think. Um, was this tutorial useful? Uh, are you impressed with the results? Do you think I could fix anything? Always open to um, constructive criticism. So yeah, just let me know. Um, if this is going to be useful, I'd also love to see if you guys are going to use this tutorial um, I'd love to see your results. So uh, Follow me on Facebook or Instagram and just drop me a message I'd love to see them share them as well. So whatever you guys do um, Yeah, it's really up to you, but go check out AB figures. I said at the start of the video uh, What AB figures would you like me to paint next? So go check them out. Let me know but apart from that, guys, that's going to conclude today's video. Um, I'd love to hear what you think of it in the comments. And as always, um, like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys at the next one. Thanks.